So welcome to Poly Role Models. Thanks for taking some time to, to, to contribute to uh, my little project. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me to be on. Awesome. Awesome. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. I am Kitty Shambliss, and I am the creator of Loving Without Boundaries, which is a website, a movement, a blog, a podcast, and uh, I also offer relationship coaching through that house and name as well. And I also run workshops around the country when I'm able to at polyamorous conferences. Mm -hmm. And I am in the business of making the world a more beautiful and loving place, one conversation at a time. So thanks for conversing with me today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So uh, how long have you been polyamorous or how long have you been practicing polyamory? I would say it's uh, going on in about seven years now. So I, I've been practicing some sort of consensual non-monogamy for over a decade, but actually identifying specifically as polyamorous for about six or seven years. Okay. What does your relationship structure look like? So I uh, have been married for 11 years tomorrow. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> My, thank you. And we dated, uh, my husband and I, for about two and a half years before that. And we were both former cheaters who didn't want to cheat anymore. So we didn't know what that meant at the time. I didn't know the word polyamory yet. But we just decided that we were going to develop our relationship and eventually our marriage the way that we saw fit, despite how society told us it was supposed to go. And so we knew that meant some sort of openness, but with honesty, of course, and integrity and just being, you know, letting each other know if we were attracted to somebody else. And so um, eventually that led to kind of swinging in the beginning. And then I read the book Ethical Slut and okay. learned the word polyamory. Um, and then we started to dive our toe into other relationships. So I first had one uh, boyfriend for about five years and that ended. And um, now I'm with my, my current beloved who we're having our two year anniversary next month. And he lives with us. So at our house, uh, it's my husband, myself, my boyfriend and our two cats. Awesome. So. awesome. <laughs> That's right. the current structure. Nice. So um, what aspect of polyamory do you feel you excel at? I would say I'm pretty darn good at communication, and it's partly because I've studied it intensively. So I've kind of made it my business to learn how to communicate well. And also my love language is words of affirmation. And I'm also a relationship coach. So talking and using words and figuring out how to get to the underlying things, the underneath conflicts, I kind of really enjoy. So, I mean, I, I like helping somebody else along that journey as well. So I would say communication is where I excel at. Okay. What aspect of polyamory do you feel like you struggle with? I would say sometimes I struggle with, uh, envy and jealousy, which is partly why I wrote a book about it, <laughs> because I've also, when I have uh, an issue, I end up diving deep and studying that issue to try and figure it out, so I compiled everything that I'd learned into a book that I recently wrote, so uh, so even though I struggle with it, I've, I've really worked hard at it, and I'm constantly working at it, like a practice so, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I was going to ask how you how you uh, how you address those struggles, but you kind of you kind of leaned into it. Unless you want to elaborate anymore. I would say uh, a lot of it, just to elaborate a little bit, and that I go into in the book is really working on yourself first, and you're looking inward to see where maybe your insecurities are coming from, and uh, learning to handle those emotions without lashing out. And just let them kind of go through your body, so to speak, and explore them and be curious about them instead of fearing them. And then when you're ready, if you think it's relevant, then going ahead and opening up a conversation, but doing it in a very respectful way that's being sensitive to the other person as well. So mm -hmm. that's, that's really worked for me. Nice. Um, now, in terms of uh, risk aware or safer sex, what do you and your partners do to protect one another? Well, we uh, ironically are all infertile <laughs> so uh, my husband and I we tried to have children it didn't work and so that's why how we know we're infertile and my boyfriend had a vasectomy so pregnancy is off the table and um, we both uh, all three of us I mean go to our local health clinic about every 
six months, okay. and we just routinely get tested. So we, uh, I would say that's really our preventative measure because we don't use barriers, uh, again, because pregnancy is kind of off the table, and we just make sure that we're all safe and physically healthy okay. and we're fluid bonded in that respect. All right. Now, what is the worst mistake you've ever made in your polyamorous history, and how did you rebound from that? I would say the worst mistake I made was forgiving a little too much with my last relationship that I was in for about five years. Now I know that there were many signs that he was cheating on me, which mm. is ironic in an open and polyamorous relationship. Yeah. And I, I didn't ignore them, but I just kept forgiving him, thinking that he would improve, and finally... Uh, when a sheriff showed up at my door, well, actually, it was even after that. I, I forget even after that. He ended up getting a restraining order from somebody. Uh, so it was a long story. It got ugly, and uh, I probably should have uh, ended that relationship earlier. Um, but I did end it uh, when another incident had happened uh, several months later. And how I rebounded was I took about two months off and just kind of three, actually, and just looked inward and tried to make sure that I was okay, that my relationship with my husband was okay, and really practiced a lot of self-care before yeah. I went back out there into the poly dating scene, and that really helped me a lot. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, now, what self-identities are important to you, and how do you feel like being polyamorous intersects with or affects those uh, identities? Uh, well, I, I would say I'm a cisgendered female, very happy being a woman and feel fortunate that that worked out well and uh, some other identities I would say that I would say that we have an open style marriage but I do like to qualify that by saying that we do practice polyamory because to me that is a very specific way that you have an open marriage and I think sometimes I'll, I'll say the word open relationship because sometimes that's what people understand if they don't know the word polyamory yeah. for the layman but I like to explain it further because I think sometimes people get the wrong idea when you say open relationship, like it's a big free-for-all and you have sex with everybody who comes along and a lot of those kind of assumptions get made. Yeah. So I like to explain that polyamory is more about love and relationships and hey, if sex is there, great, but it's not necessarily about the sex. And also you're still choosing your partner's it's not just a, hey, let's have a big orgy, because I think that's definitely one of the assumptions that happens often. So yeah. um, other ways I identify, um, do you mean more in the, in the sexual sense? Um, more in the, um, the personal identity sense, where, you know, uh, you know um, race or, um, I, race or uh, gender orientation, um, able body status. Uh, you sure. Know. Um, I would say I'm uh, heteroflexible meaning that I uh, I view it as kind of a spectrum. Okay. You know, so like if this is all the way heterosexual and this is all the way homosexual, I'm somewhere like over here. <laughs> so I'm mostly heterosexual, but I have an open mind. I have had sex with women and I find women beautiful, but I don't identify personally as bisexual because I've never fallen in love with a woman and I don't know if I have the capacity for that. That's kind of how I describe it. Okay. And I also identify as an infertility survivor, and so I mention that partly because you mentioned about being able-bodied. Um, yeah. I mean, physically, I am uh, generally able-bodied, but I am an infertility survivor, and I like to be open about that because uh, it is another minority in the world, and yeah. I am all about reducing stigmas of any kind. Yeah, and it, it does affect your polyamory to some extent. It does. You're right. It absolutely does. Mm. Yeah. All right, Ola, uh, do you have any groups, projects, websites, I know that you do, blogs, yeah. um, that you're involved with that you would like to promote? Sure. So my, my website is lovingwithoutboundaries.com, all spelled out, and that's where you can find my blog and my podcast of the same name. I am also on Twitter at Polly Talk by Kitty. I didn't have the foresight to get Loving Without Boundaries there. And I also literally just wrote a book that went live about a week ago called The Jealousy Survival Guide, How to Feel Safe, Happy, and Secure in an Open Relationship. And I purposely said the word open relationship since a lot of people don't know the word polyamory. Yeah. And that will, right now, it is available in the Kindle version, 
but there is going to be a free promotion from November 1st to November 5th where you can download the book for free. And there will also be a print version soon. I just need to lay it out. So. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I yeah. can't, I can't I wait to promote for it. I will be at um, Beyond the Love in Columbus, Ohio, uh, December 1st through the 3rd. Okay. Uh, I'll be attending. I won't be speaking. But it's, it's a great event, if anyone. So I'm happy to promote that as well. Yeah, I always hear really good things about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for taking your time, making the time for uh, to be a part of Poly Role Models. Thank you. I've loved every minute of it. I've loved talking to you and getting to know you. So thank you for that. Yeah, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad I could show up on show up in your work as well as you've shown up in mine. Absolutely. I love collaboration, so we can do it again sometime. Awesome. Awesome.